It's time for Tales of Terror, only on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. This is Brett Lovecraft coming to you live from the streets of Portland. Little is known about what started these riots, only that they started a little over two hours ago and appear to be simultaneously choreographed throughout the city. In some areas, the riots have become extreme, brutal, and in some extreme cases, cannibalism. Oh my God, look at the size of those things. Move, move, we have to get... Oh, God! Keep it! No! And people say there's nothing interesting on TV these days. It began a long time ago. This is how it ends, with the screams of the dying whilst those responsible hide their heads underground. You can't think this has anything to do with us. This has to do with all of us. You let the grass grow under your feet in Europe. While you sat in comfort enjoying your lifestyle, Dracula made deals with the Lycans. Now just one minute, pale man. No, Felix. It is true. And I should have stopped Branlarvin from distributing Rush. I should have sorted out that maggot when I had the chance. And when you've finished feeling sorry for yourself, what are we going to do? Don't think you're absolved of any blame. The Order, for all their attitude, are still just a bunch of foot soldiers following rules without the capacity for free-thinking. You're as much to blame as anyone. We should all have been ready for this. Well, standing here debating the issue isn't going to help us. What are we going to do about this city? We aren't doing anything. You and Dimitri have enough forces between you to encircle the city and contain the Lycans and the Revenants. And what about you? I have to get Chris Sparrow back. You do know it's probably a trap, right? Dracula's not going to just let you walk in there and take her. I know, but I can't just leave her. I have to go alone. Can I trust you to work together? The fate of Portland and maybe more rests on it. Of course you can. Kate? I suppose, if I must... Yes, you must. (sighs) Very well. I'll need to contact my troops. Here, take my cell. You had a cell phone? I could have used it to get my people down here to free us hours ago. That's why I didn't tell you. Dimitri, Felix, good luck. And to you, pale man. Everything is prepared, my master. Very good, Bran Laven. My plan is coming together nicely. The Pale Man City has fallen into chaos and soon... She will be returned to me. She, my lord? The one who the Pale Man took from me. My love. My bride. Through Chris Sparrow, Leviathan will be brought into this realm. And once reborn... Mina and I will rule this world in his name. Please. Please stop this. I'm sorry, my dear. I don't have the right. Destiny has foretold that a new age is to begin, and I won't stand in Destiny's way. Fear not, Chris Sparrow, for in the era to come you will be revered. The mother of the age of the Leviathan. Our kind will look upon your sacrifice this night and worship you as a martyr. Nay, a goddess! I don't... I don't want to be... to be a goddess. I said that you'll be looked upon like a goddess, not that you actually would become one. Your legend will live on, even though you won't. You'll be stone-cold dead. Iron will come for me. I do hope so, Miss Sparrow. In fact, I'm counting on it. Now do hold on tight and try to scream loudly. Look, Master. 
Look at the sky. Yes, Brantley. It's beginning. I had no idea where I should go, let alone what I was going to do when I got there. All I knew for sure was hell had been unleashed on Portland. Everywhere fires were burning, revenants and lichens attacked in masses, killing anyone who was unfortunate enough to be caught by them. Curiously enough, they left me alone. I walked through the center of the street and none of them paid me any attention. I felt almost invisible. I began to make my way towards the Ross Island Bridge, and out of nowhere, a solitary figure in a long black cloak stood waiting for me. On what are you doing here? Believe me, this really isn't the time. Well, don't just stand there. Perhaps it's escaped your attention, but hell on earth has broken out in Portland. Just because you've passed on doesn't mean it won't affect you. It won't just stop here. Speak to me, damn it! If you're here to gloat, then gloat. If you want me to beg for forgiveness or say I'm sorry, then you're too late. I carry that pain with me every day. The figure remained silent. It lifted a bone finger and pointed out across the water. That's when I saw a strange light coming from the location of Ross Island. It was a dark blood red in color and slowly growing larger in size. It reminded me of a similar light I encountered on the Isle of Dogs a year ago. The cloaked figure vanished before my eyes. Yeah, this can't be good. My guards have set up a perimeter. They're just about holding a line to prevent the revenants and lichens from progressing outwards. Good. All communication in or out of the city has been cut off. Portland is quarantined to the rest of the world. Excellent. Now we must keep it that way and press our advantage while we can. How soon before your forces can assist in containing the trouble in the center of the city? Oh, didn't I tell you? My forces won't be joining the party, I'm afraid. In fact, they're pulling out. What do you mean? You gave Byron your word you'd help. Oh, we're going to help. Once our forces are at a safe distance, we're going to level the city with a thermal detonation. Lichens, vampires, all taken care of. You're gonna nuke Portland? What about my people? They're still in there. I have no doubt that you'll find others to replace them. The situation is too volatile. It, it must be stopped as soon as possible, and I have... Uh, I ha- I have to stop it. But what about the people inside the city? This isn't some little town in the middle of nowhere. Someone is going to notice what you're planning on doing here today. We're not as reactive as Byron would have you believe. Our allies in the Black Door group have already created a cover story prepared for this type of situation. The newspapers will have a nice terrorist organization to focus their anger on. Humans. And you have the nerve to call us monsters. Understand this, blood drinker. I would show no remorse in killing you here and now, so feel grateful I am keeping my end of the deal. We're letting you, your wife, and Felix go. And that's meant to make us feel better. Transport has already been arranged to take you back to France. However, if you feel the need to decline this offer, I will kill you. Here and now. It seems we have little choice, then. No, you... (sighs) You don't. You don't. Are you having a little trouble concentrating there, Kate? Maybe your pills are wearing off. (laughs) Uh, I'll be fine. (sighs) You just worry about your your own skin. Yeah, you're right. I should. Pale man told me it's a delicacy among zombies. Felix, what are you doing? Relax, my lord. Wouldn't want you to be like Kate here and lose your mind. I am not. I'm losing my, my 
mind. My mind. Looking for these? Oh, give, give me back. Me eat my pills. Me eat my pills. Oh, I know. Yes, I know. Run, my lord. Try and get our forces out of the city before these fools destroy it. Be safe, Felix. Uh, you are going to regret this. Regrets? Oh, I am full of regrets, my girl. Still, it does make eternity interesting. Here you go, zombie. Catch. <laughs> Uh, you, you will s- suffer, suffer for putting, putting, putting me through, through this. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe. But you're gonna have to catch me first, and by the time your meds kick in, I'll be long gone. Until next we meet, Miss Vassen. <laughs> <laughs> Undead bastard. I had always imagined that my time in Portland would end at a time of my own choosing, when I had seen enough people decay and die. When changes in industry, architecture, and attitudes had made me feel like a relic. I imagined a time when I could return to my life before the Shadow Realms, before my punishment. Now it appears fate has dealt me a different card, the Ace of Spades. I wonder if this is how Napoleon felt. I really should have asked him. I now face the Eve of Waterloo, or, to be more precise, the Eve of Portland. Go no further, brother. Get out of my way, Slate. I don't have time for our customary friendly banter. Byron... For once you will listen to me. Look at what is happening here. I warned you all those years ago that consorting with humanity would bring a cost. You once believed, as I do, that human affairs were best left alone. That was when they were in their infancy, riding horses using crude bronze weapons, making dangerous wheels of cheese. Look at them now, Slate! Open your eyes! I knew it would be fruitless to reason with you. Nevertheless, I cannot allow you to go any further. You can't stop me. I have to face Dracula. I have to stop this. He's unleashing something, and I got a pretty good idea of what it is. And I am not in the mood for it dancing across Portland. You have to do nothing. If the Leviathan enters our realm, then we will face it then. All of us. Together. Leave this world to its end. There are still so many others. This world has one difference. Now get out of my way. Byron, listen to me. Oh, I'm tired of listening to you. It's always the same thing. You must return to your realm and sit around and do nothing because that's the only thing we're good for. Go back to the realm. This fight isn't for you. If you go, then you will die. You don't know that for sure. It is destiny. I have seen the man in the black cloak. He told me the future. Impossible. The man in the cloak doesn't speak. He just likes to point at things and show off how mysterious he is. I thought so as well. However, he came to me. He showed me the future. You will die. Soon you will sacrifice yourself for nothing. There is no such thing as sacrificing yourself for nothing. If I die, I plan to make sure it's for something. You stupid, thick-headed, arrogant fool. You expect me to accept you throwing yourself away again? I've already lost you once. Our father, our mother, our sister. I will not live alone. I found myself staring at my brother. Never before had he said the words. So much unsaid between us. For the first time I saw beyond the strong, principled man to the insecure being beneath. I put my hand on his shoulder. I will return, Slate. 
just as I did after the Isle of Dogs. Perhaps this time. But the future is unfolding. And I fear your tale is ending. Slate handed me a long metal spike. From its tip I could see the remnants of a liquid. It was filled with dragon venom. The very same poison Dracula had inflicted on me when last we met. You know what to do with it, brother. Yes, I do. But right now, I have to go for a little swim. It would have been nice if they had built a bridge to Ross Island rather than passing near it. Oh well, here goes. One small step for a man, and words to that effect. It's destiny that I shall have his blood. He won't let you in. <laughs> you pleasantly surprise me, Miss Sparrow. I expected you to be much closer to death at this stage. Can you still focus? Can you see up in the sky? You're responsible for that. I think you will. What do you want me to do, Master? I want you to go to the city, check on the progress of the Revenants. If it looks like the conflict is won, order them to turn on the Lycans. Yes, my lord. home to me. leader. And why would a pack leader wish to talk to someone like you? Do you not know who I am? Oh, uh, we all know you. Dimitri of the European Coven. I am also the lord of all vampire covens. I am Ryak, son of Tyak. Can you take me to your pack leader? No, he has returned to the old country. I am the leader of these packs. If I was to kill you now, I could mount a challenge to the Alpha. I would be the man who brought down the head of the vampires. Wait, wait, I, I, I have a proposal to make. Really? And what could you possibly have to offer to me? I know that you have an agreement with Dracula, that in return for assisting the Revenants, he will let you sit as equals. Yes. This is true. Do you really expect him to keep his end of the covenant when this is over? I expect him to betray us. That is the way of the vampires. Our Alpha is weak. He has lost his way. He decreed that we would aid the Dark Father in his cause. Therefore, we do as we are tasked. Your society is very archaic. We obey the codes of conduct set down by our forefathers. If I am chosen to die tonight in pursuit of it, then so be it. Just as my father before me, I am ready to die upholding the decree of the Alpha. What if I made an alternative offer? Would you listen? <laughs> and what makes you any more trustworthy than the Dark Father? Look out! Better betrayal! You shall not take this one, foul beast! 
What did I tell you? Now will you listen to me? You have saved my life. <sighs> By the laws of the code, I owe you a debt that must be repaid. The damp, dark walls of Dracula's basement reminded me of the cave in which he had imprisoned me when he tortured me with the saline of dragon's venom. I could sense that he was close and could hear the noises of electricity and machinery. I entered the room gingerly, the red light from Portland's clouds bathing the room through a window in the ceiling. My senses were at their peak, expecting something nasty to be waiting. I stopped. A lump in my throat as I saw Chris Sparrow, tubes directly attached to her skin, a mass of metal and wires surrounding her. Dear God, what have I let happen to her? Chris, Chris, what's happened? Are you okay? Please, make it stop. Please, it hurts. I can feel it burning inside me. Please, take it away. I'll stop it. It'll all be over soon, I promise you. And then you'll be free of this thing. Do you honestly think you can stop it now, pale man? Nothing can prevent his arrival. Maybe we can call a truce. When he returns my beloved Mina to me, maybe he will return a loved one to you. Kristen, perhaps. Would you call yourself Alastair once more if he did that? I don't think so. You can't tempt me with your promises. I'm a believer in progress. Very wise. Maybe you could be of use in this new age after all. I've no intention of serving at anyone's right hand. Been there, done that, wore the t-shirt, wore the t-shirt, turned it into a rage. You get the point. (sighs) Very well. Then maybe all that's left for you is death. Ha! A sword. Apathetically gothic. And your metal stake is the epitome of 21st century technology? It does its job. (laughs) We are of the old times. This is how it's meant to be. Two great powers fighting for supremacy at the start of a new age. An age I intend to welcome personally. And I intend to stop you. Somehow I expected this to be a bit more fun. Once I have removed your head, I shall place it at the centre of what remains of your precious Portland. Goodbye, pale man. Dimitri! No. What are you doing here? Your alpha swore your support to me. Ryak has offered an alternative plan from a more trustworthy source. Lycans, vampires, humans, all working together to drive your abominations out of the city. I believe this belongs to you. We found it on the shoulders of someone called Branleven. He begged for his life and told us how to find you. Then we killed him. It's over, Dracula. Switch off the machine. You think you're so clever, Byron. You think you've won. Stop the progress of Leviathan. Well, I think not. He dances, and tonight he dances for you! Where's he gone? We mustn't let him escape. No, we have to stop the machine! We can't allow Leviathan access to this world! How do we do that? it. Have we stopped it? If only it was easy as pulling the lever to the off position. We have to get Chris out of here. It's still feeding on her blood. Byron, I'm sorry, but look. Dimitri pointed to Chris. Her body was now fused with the machine. There was no way of freeing her. I was too late. The machine was still drawing her blood, her life force. While she was still part of the machine, it was still using her to power the gateway for Leviathan. We have to get out of here before it's too late. There's nothing we can do. Take Ryuk and everyone else you find to get them as far away from here as possible. What are you going to do? Just go. 
Chris. Chris, can you hear me? Lauren. I... I knew... You always keep me safe. Everything's going to be okay. We're just in a bit of a pickle, that's all. You're not angry, are you? <laughs> I held on as long as I could. I was strong. Just like you taught me to be. I'm so very tired. Everything will be better in the morning, and when you wake, you can tell me all about your dreams. It's been so long since I dreamt. <laughs> I love you, Byron. You never let anything bad happen to me. And I never will. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> Report. The weapon has been primed, sir. Our target is Pioneer Courthouse Square. Once the missile goes off, everything within a 20 mile radius will be reduced to ash. Very good. You're right, Mum. You don't look well. I'm fine. Are you sure? Perhaps I should get one of the doctors to. I said I'm fine. We have a job to do. Prepare to fire. Yes, sir. All lights are in the green. We're good to go. On my mark. Three, two, one. Sister Catherine, I have an update. What is it? The riots have ended in Portland. All of those zombie things are gone, as well as lichens. It's like they just left. And the red light. That's gone as well. Even the storm seems to be passing. <sighs> Interesting. What do you want to do, Mom? The missile set to fly. Stand down. Prepare for full evacuation force from this area. At once. Well, Byron, it looks like you succeeded. But I wonder at what cost. How can I believe you will betray us like Dracula? Because I have learned that halting progress and clinging to the past will ultimately bring trouble to your own door. If your challenge to the Alpha is successful, then I look forward to welcoming you to our chateau. Negotiations will start in earnest. You, you have earned my respect, Dimitri. I only hope I can bring the Lycans into a new era. As do I. Farewell, my friend. Condolences. On the loss of your lieutenant. I don't believe he's lost. Felix will be out there somewhere. He might even be waiting for us back in France. Au revoir, Ryuk. Chris back to my tower in the rose garden. I gently laid her upon the leaf-covered grounds behind my home. I can't help but wonder how many have died because of my actions. Has anything I've done made any difference? The great conflict grows ever closer, and nothing I've done has prepared anyone to deal with. I look up at the sunrise. The storm clouds have cleared, but a haze fills the air. Smoke from countless fires still burning throughout Portland. All of my plans, everything I've worked towards. There's nothing but ashes left now. And Chris Sparrow, my friend, my... I'm so sorry, Chris. You deserved so much more than this. I knelt down beside her still form. Her body had grown cold pushed a lock of her hair away from her face. Chris Sparrow, my friend, my... 
I want to scream, but don't. I want to cry in despair, but can't. All I do is sit next to her on the ground. They say it gets easier with time, but it never does. The hurt just makes you worse. It eats away at your darkened soul. Have I not been punished enough? That's when I noticed him for the first time. A grey-haired man in a black cloak, standing observing my pain with a silent gloat. It is unfortunate, is it not? The price mortals pay when the gods choose to walk amongst them. But then is the Pelman truly a god at all? Or a simple immortal plane as a god? Be cautious, steward of autumn, lest you be stepped upon. What? What? How, How do you know what I... What I... I know much about you, Paleman. But I see I have intruded on something very personal for you. I, too, have lost people I loved. Millions of them. All because they worshipped me instead of him. He made me watch as his angels killed each and every one of my followers. As the last of my children fell, he cast me into the labyrinth to rot for all eternity. The labyrinth? Who are you? I think you already know. I was the first one cast out when this flawed reality came into being. Nevertheless, I am free once more. I will take back that which has been stolen from me. I am Leviathan, and I will have my vengeance. You've been listening to The Byron Chronicles, Season 2, Episode 9, The Hour of Portland. Written by Mark D. Renshild and Eric Busby. Featured in the cast were David Alt as Byron, Laura Post as Chris Sparrow, Mark Buzzi as Slate, Morgan Presley as Catherine Mason, Ben Harmer as Bren Laven, Clemangus Dodds as Dracula, Darren Mar as Ryak, John Specht as Dimitri, Brad Smith as Felix, Bruce Busby as Brett Lovecraft, Michael Hudson as Aid One, Ellie Hirschman as Aid Two, and Julian Bain as Leviathan. Music provided by Midnight Syndicate and Kevin McLeod. Byron theme by Kai Hartwig. This episode was produced and directed by Eric Busby. Post-production work by Eric Busby. This has been on Darker Projects Production. This has been a Darker Projects production. Visit us on the web at www.darkerprojects.com. There are many things that we can all do that may help stop the spread of the coronavirus. But one thing we can all do is to have a plan in case you do get sick. First, Consult with your health care provider for more information about monitoring your health for symptoms suggestive of COVID-19. Second, stay in touch with others by phone or email. You may need to ask for help from friends, family, neighbors, community health workers, or more if you become sick. And finally, determine who can care for you if your caregiver gets sick. For more information, go to cdc.gov and... Be well, everyone.